Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and we are continuing on the AP Calculus 2017 uh, free response questions. And we're looking at number five. And as a reminder, number f these are the non-calculator portion of the, so I have to do everything by hand. Two particles move along the x-axis. For t between zero and eight, the position of particle p at times t is given by this, while the velocity of particle q at time t is given by this. So this is position, and this is velocity. Particle q at position x equals five time. For zero, between zero and eight, when, when is particle p moving to the left? Okay, particle p is moving to the left when the velocity is negative, because positive velocity would be it's moving to the right. Negative velocity means it would move to the left. So I need to know when the velocity of particle p is less than zero. So velocity of p is the derivative of position. Velocity and position are, are related. So the derivative of this. So the derivative of natural log is one, is one over the inside. But because I am, um, uh, because the inside is not just t by itself, I got to do chain rule. So then the derivative of this part, the inside, is 2t minus 2. Okay, so that's 2t minus 2 over t squared minus 2t plus 10. Now, um, this one doesn't factor in the bottom, so I'm really interested in knowing of a few cases when this whole thing is moving to the left. Now, I think this thing is always positive the denominator here. And the reason why is um, I'm thinking when I do the quadratic formula just to check, uh, I want to see what solutions there are. So the way you know the solutions I would do, um, well, because the zeros would tell me where it crosses between positive and negative. So I'm interested in the zeros in the denominator. So um, b squared, which would be 2 plus or minus square root of b squared is 4 minus 4 times 1 times 10, 4ac. And this is always negative, right? So I can't do the square root of negative number here. So there are no solutions. That means this thing, if I plug in like zero, t equals zero, I get 10. If I plug in one, this this part is, this bottom is always greater than zero. So t squared minus two t plus 10 is always greater than zero. That implies that um, VP of t is only less than zero when the numerator is less than zero because the only way I get the whole thing negative is that the numerator is negative because the denominator is always positive. So this is always less. Than, this is only less than zero when two t minus two is less than zero. Add two to both sides. Two t is less than two, or t is less than one. So between zero less than or equal t is less than one. This is part A. Okay, part B. Between time zero and eight, find all times t during which the two particles travel in the same direction. Okay, so we already know that between zero and one, particle p is moving to the left, and presumably between one and eight, they're moving to the right, right? That's like the only way, because then it's um, positive uh, for the other time. So I need to know when, what, what, when, what, uh, when vq is positive or negative. vq is equal to t squared minus 8t, but I can factor this, I think, minus 5, minus 3. Okay. Now, when t, so, so if t is bigger than 5, so, so the crossings are at 3 and 5. So really, it's 0 at 3 and 5, and then I have to kind of think about in between what's happening. When t is greater than 5, vq is greater than 0, because both of these would be positive, right? If I pick like 8, 8 minus 5 is positive, 8 minus 3 is also positive. Between 3 and 5, vq is negative. It's because when I'm between 3 and 5 at like 4, for example, this one is positive and this one is negative. Positive times negative is negative. And then when t is less than 3, vq is greater than 0. 
because when I'm less than three, both of these numbers will be negative, right? If I'm like like one, right? Both of the one minus five is negative four, one minus three is negative two, both negative, so the whole thing will be positive. Okay, so these are the directions, and we know that VP moves to the left when it's less than one. So let's look at the overlap. Um, when I'm less than one, I'm moving to the left. VP is moving to the left. So that means VP and VPQ. So P and Q both moving um actually between so so let, let, let's let's kind of list it out like vq is going to the right which times between t is less than three and um t is greater than five and vq is going to the left when between between three and five. Now VP is going to the left when T is less than one, and VP goes to the right when T is greater than one. So what's the overlap here? Um, they're both going to the right between one and three, right? Um, and then also when t is greater than 5. And they're both moving to the left. See, vp is only to the left when t is less than 1. And vq is going to the left. They're never both going to the left at the same time. So it's only these intervals. They're never going left at the same time. Okay, so that's that one. That was a little bit of a tricky question. Okay, C, find the acceleration of particle Q at times T equals two. Is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at times T equals zero? Explain your reasoning. Okay, acceleration of particle. So what's the acceleration related to, um, so for C, the acceleration is related by taking the derivative. So you wanna explicitly write it. Oops, this is Q. And that's 2t minus 8. Um, so at time 2, the acceleration is, I plug in 2 for negative 4. Um, is the speed increasing? Because the, the rate of change of its velocity is negative, um, its velocity is going negative, but that doesn't necessarily, speed is absolute value, so you, you kind of have to be a little bit careful. What is the velocity that Q is going at time T equals two? His velocity is, um, I plug in two into like this one, T minus five. You can plug into this one or this one. Well, I'll do it this one. Two squared is four, four minus 16 uh, is negative 12. Negative 12 is, is three. Okay, so his speed is three and his velocity is negative, hence he's, uh, his speed is decreasing. Because, he, because a q of t at two is less than zero. Actually, I'll say velocity here. Hence the speed is decreasing. Now I want you to be careful on this one because of speed. If the if the velocity we found was negative and the acceleration was negative, then it would be going more negative. And because speed is absolute value, it would mean the speed is actually going faster. So you cannot just simply justify simply based on the derivative. You for speed at least. For velocity, it's fine. But for speed, because speed's the absolute value of velocity, there's some tricky things. If the velocity was negative and then he was going more negative, he'd actually be going faster. He would just be going faster in the left direction. Okay. Now part D, I have room over here to write, I think. Yeah. Find the position of particle Q the first time it changes directions. Um Okay, so there's a few things. I need to know when it changes direction. When it changes directions is when the velocity, like, like it's, it's what I did from here. The first time it changes directions, see, um, VQ was going to the right 
for less than three, then at three it switches to the left. So at t equals three, um, q switches from left to right. And that's where it goes from positive to negative. Or so it, it went from, um, yeah, positive to negative. It went from right to left. Sorry, I have this backwards. Right to left. Okay. But that's not asking. It's find the position at that time. So at time t equals 3 is when it changes velocity. What is its position? Its position as it relates to the velocity is the integral of vq of t dt. And I'm going to plug in 0 to t here. And I got to add it. I really should put in a dummy variable there, but it's fine as long as you just know to ignore what's inside there. And I got to add the initial position, um, which is um, plus five, because at time zero, he's really at plus five. So, um, so then this equals the integral of this is one third t cubed minus 4t squared plus 15t evaluated from t equals 0 to t plus 5. When I plug in 0, it doesn't do anything. So it's just this plus 5. It's 1 third t cubed minus 4t squared plus 15t plus 5. So x q, his position at time 3. 3 is when he switched his directions. Um, I plug in 3 here. Uh, 3 cubed 27 by 3 is 9. 9 minus 36 plus 45 plus 5. 45 minus 36 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 plus 5 is 23. All right. So let's take a look at the scoring guidelines, see how we did on this one. Uh, question 5, part a left between zero and one that's good did i yeah i have the less than there okay um let's see both particles move in the same direction for t between one and three and five and eight is that what i wrote t th oh i should have i should have put this eight there i don't know if they would dock me because it's really between zero and eight um so I'm not sure if they would dock me any points for that. Um, but, you know, it's it's not, I'm technically not correct. It, it, I do need to bound, upper bound it by 8. Um, C, decreasing, but velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. It's one way to read it. Okay, as long as you just have a reason. So it is decreasing, that's good. Oops, let's not look at question 6 yet. Uh, particle changes times t equals 3, and I got 23 here. So 23. Okay, cool. So we basically got that right. I left out a small minus thing on the bounds and the upper bound of that. And the reason the 8 matters is because really these things only are valid between 0 and 8. So technically, um, it's true. I got to put an 8 on this, this bound here. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe. And I will see you guys for the next and last uh, free response question from the 2017 AP Calculus exam, um, question number six. Thanks.